morning, everyone. First of all, thank you for, for being here for this session. It's, it will be a, a, quite a mix of that discussion and that sort of thing about hands on events and, and, and event and automation. So we will go through our different use cases and how we can you know, uh, start leveraging the technology and the integrations starting from the so Just a couple of um, things about me. I'm uh, a special solution architect at Leather since two years now. And I mostly focus on automation and collaboration. So, and I recently moved also on the rail side. So I, I, I'm also taking care of the operating system part. You potentially, we could have met at any other conference or even here last year, where the session was quite similar. And yeah, just this is basically me in a nutshell. So we can just go and start with the agenda. So the, the, the idea was to introduce a bit the event to automation for those who are not familiar with that, with that concept. And then we will go a bit deeper and we will dive a bit deeper on some of the use cases, real, real life use cases, where you can leverage event driven automation and the integration with other products. In, 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 in this case, we will also go through the components of the demo because we will touch point on some of the technology like shift neutralization and red up sites to showcase some of the integration, also of course dynamics and service now. And then we will go in the use cases. So we will have three different use cases. A smart brief introduction about the use case and then we will have a, a recorded demo because of course it will play a bit of fun for digital machines and we will wait for events to happen. But we will go through that. And of course at the end of the session if you have any question, any curiosity or whatever, I will be here with an discussion. Starting from the beginning, so what is event driven automation? A normal in side of events like something is happening, someone realizes that something is happening and then there are different manual or automated processes that are in place to just, you know, remediate a security issue or monitoring event or whatever. What, what is the difference in the paradigm when we are talking about event driven automation? Event driven automation is something that is listening for something to happen. So you, you, you don't have to, it could be a monitoring system, it could be a security alert, it could be a push or on a GitHub repo or whatever, to just react to, to, the, uh, to the event in, in an automated way. So you, you are not dealing with different teams, you are not dealing with different people that it needs to be involved for maybe resolving a CPU issue on, on, on a machine. And, and of course, in this session we will not mention AI, unfortunately, but of course this can be integrated also with some of automated remediation based on enrichment made, made by LLMs or whatever, so to just maybe have an input, an error as, as an input, and then, then uh, there can be some agent behind it that can interpret the, the error and provide the solution and implement the solution itself with AI. Yes. Today we are not talking about AI. So we will just focus on how event driven automation is working. So we talked at the beginning that we are waiting for something to happen. We have some listeners, some sources that, that, that are the, um, the generators for, air, for the event that triggers the automation. So, the, the basic architecture is, is made by a source that can be I mean, a webhook, it can be a I mean, uh, Kafka event, it can be potentially anything. You, you, you can also extend, and we will see that we can extend the capabilities. And then we have an engine. The engine is based on tools in the open source project, and uh, it can enrich the files that are coming from the event. And it can take decisions based on conditions. So you can have a condition like a threshold for a, a, a specific metric, or you can have uh, an input that needs to be elaborated and needs to be enriched with some other content, so to provide maybe to open a ticket or to just provide a resolution for the issue itself. And then, of course, there is the automation. The, the automation part will be based on playbooks, on Ansible playbooks. That is, Basically, there is no difference in what we usually do in automation with that. So it's standard playbooks. The only additional component that we have is in the decision part. Because we will be using a different tool that is called a book. That is basically a sort of recipe like the playbook, but it's a recipe to perform 
information and gather the information about the, the, the events themselves. And of course, this is, since the sources can be potentially anything, the, the integration can, can happen with all devices. It can be a network device, it can be a cloud service, it can be potentially anything. And so we have the three key building blocks. So this, just to summarize, we have sources that can be potentially anything. Some rules that need to be uh, processed by our engine, these rules. And then we have some actions. So we have the power playbooks. As we mentioned, the only difference is how the logic is implemented in, uh, in event driven answer. Because actually we are using rules. The rules are, if, if, if you see this, it's very similar to a playbook. So the structure is a classic YAML. With, the, with two differences, basically. The, the first one is the source. So we have a, an input that is called source that specifies which is the plugin that needs to be used to process the event. In this case, and in the use cases that we are using, we will use the source for rendered insights that is basically pushing a notification, a JSON notification to the system. But we can also have a manager in, 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 in integration, also now service now integration. So if a ticket is raised, the event you can answer the controller can retrieve the information and then perform something based on that. And then we have the rules. Of course, that there is the logic. So the conditions and everything that needs to be processed to just go through and pre prepare all the variables and everything that will that we be called facts here and pass it to the process. So we can just do an, 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 an enrichment directly at run. And of course, this opens the door to potentially any use case. So we are not bound to classical automation, so install a package or just react to a potential issue that we have in the system. It could be potentially anything, because it could be integrated with networking devices, so if there is an outage or if there is a breach in a, in a, in a firewall tool or whatever, it can be also uh, intercepted and then uh, processed. And, 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 and of course, in, in this case, we are talking about uh, the the Ansible automation platform. But of course, we have the upstream project, which is basically the Ansible version of this. That are exactly, they're not doing exactly the same. So it's not about the product itself, it's just about the, the intentional automation in general. When we are going to the different use cases, I just wanted to, to make a bit of introduction of what we are going to use. So first of all, we will have the automation controller. That is basically the core uh, part of, of the platform that will take care of running the playbook. So it's like running an Ansible playbook at least for, from the command line, but it's just about in a, uh, in, in a centralized way. And, and of course, you can also manage credentials, inventories, create workflows, approvals, and whatever. And, oh, and, and, and of course, you, you can also configure uh, access and security between the whole base access. The other component that we'll be using is the event driven control. So it's it, the actual engine that will make the, uh, the so called rulebook activation. So the, the, the engine that is running the, the, the rulebook itself, so waiting for the event, taking some actions. And of course, this, that there is a tight integration with the automation controller. So when you are launching, action from uh, the roadbook, it will just trigger the idea the, of the, 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 the on the controller. And then we have two other components that we are using here. The first one is OpenShift virtualization because we will provision a virtual machine in OpenShift virtualization and all the process of provisioning, patching, and whatever will start automatically. We can see that in action. And then we have the last thing that is Red Hat Insights. So basically, the, the, the base usage of Red Hat Insights is just taking care, basically, it's a software as a service solution. That is just taking care of implementing best practices, advisories, and whatever for Red Hat systems. So since I'm provisioning a rail machine on all the virtualization, we, we will leverage insights to get some information about the packages that needs to be updated and potential security. But let's go into the first use case. So the first use case is a, something that is very common. So we are producing a machine and then we just need to be um, ready with that machine to 
put it in production. So we don't want to have updated packages and whatever on that system. So, we, so this is the idea. So we have two event sources for this use case. The, the first event source is relative insights, and the second event source is a web. So basically what happens is in the, in, in the actual flow, we will get an event during the VM creation. So we will create the VM in, in OpenShift virtualization. That VM will start, will be booted and everything. At the end of the provisioning part, there is a cloud delete bit. So we are just doing some last minute configuration on, on, on the instance itself. This triggers an event. And this event is based exactly on, okay, now, it's the monitoring agent that we will use for the second use case, or it can be potentially anything, run on the scan profile, or whatever. It can be, in our, in our use case, it will just configure monitoring, so it will install the Dynatrace agent, and we will have some very basic, like the host name, the, the host name registration and some network configuration. Once the, the, the machine is registered, and so the last part is the subscription, so registering the machine to the Red Hat, the Red Hat the Red Hat systems, and then when we have the registration, in insights will fetch the information from the from the VM. We'll see that there will be a lot of security issues because I take a very updated image, so there are a lot of information that needs to be processed, and it will trigger another job. So the, the last job will be a workflow where there will be an approval because the update of the package requires time boot, so we cannot just do that in a super automatic way. And the, the, and the last bit will be exactly having a, 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 a virtual machine that is up and running, ready for, for, for production use, without even touching. So the, <coughs> the only manual thing that we will be doing is just creating the virtual machine. So let's see that in action. I have to record the video because the provision side takes a bit to be done, but we will see all the components together. So this should be now a bit more familiar. Let's see if the resolution. We have a roadbook activation that is running, so we have the insights activation and the uh, webhook activation that are running. So the system is now waiting for some information to happen in the system to, to just trigger the, uh, the, 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 the automation. We, we did, this is the, the AutoShift console where we have the virtualization part, so we, we see that we don't have any virtual machine right now. And what we will be doing next is just to jump in the in the, the insights console and just check that there are no systems that are attached to, to, our, to, to our account right now. So it's, we are starting from a clean situation, so no, so nothing is left in the case. So, and then the last bit is, okay, we now jump to the, the automation controller, where we have a playbook, of course, that is provisioning the machine automation utilization. So I have a template that is, um, that is made to create and configure the, 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 the virtual machine. We have a sort of cloud-like uh, interface where you can choose the CPU, the, the, the RAM and everything. And we also have a provision web. That is very important. This part is super important because it will pass to cloud init the web that needs to be contacted after the creation. So a sort of phone uh, bit in, 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 in the cloud init uh, setup. Now, when we are creating the virtual machine, again, we are creating the instance in the shift virtualization, and then the shift virtualization will take care of uh, starting the instance and making sure that the instance is running. So if you, play, you, you can see that the, in the bottom left that the, that the virtual machine is, is provisioning. And once the, the virtual machine is provisioned, so it's actually running, it will run the cloud inputs. So we will have the last configuration that we need to show. And this is this is important because it's one of the um, it's a sort of callback that we have in so we can be sure that the virtual machine is up and running, the configuration is ended, and then we can perform all the other operations that we need to do, like configuring monitoring or in, in my case we will be uh, installing uh, as I said the data trace agent and we will perform and we will also install the method collection, so for the not exported part for the methods that we will use in, in, the next, uh, in, in the next use case. Now it should be provisioning. So 
this is a very classical machine, so it's a red machine, so nothing really fancy. It's a basic system with a very old image. And what happened is that when I created this image, I imported left some of the packages unpatched, so I just decided to just use a very standard image. And, 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 and the reason is just because I didn't, I didn't want to have, I, I wanted to have something that could be used to just you know, uh, have the, the, the automatic patching in place. So in, in this space, it is just, I'm just concerned because it should be way, okay. Oh. So once the provision is ended, you will see on, on, on the top right that you will get an, um, an input so we will have a, an additional line on, on the event driven controller that, that will be taking care of the web part. So basically we will have the configuration exactly. The, 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 this is the web that I was talking about. So we have some information about the source, so it's coming from OCP virtualization, and it just triggered some of the jobs that need to be taken care of. So registering the the, the, the to the Red Hat systems, configure the node exporter, so the node exporter bits. And then we will also have the last part that will be the, the registration on Red Hat Insights. So it will be the last bit of having the, the, the configuration to trigger the last part. And in the top right, we will have I, I, again an, 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 another um, entry that will be taking care of the, 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 the insights part. the last part. So the registration on, 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 on insights means that the system is going to get registered on the system and it will start fetching some metrics coming from the system. As you can see here, there are a lot of vulnerabilities and a lot of patches that can be, uh, that can be installed. And this is the payload that I was talking about. So I have all the information about the CVs that are coming from insights and in the playbook, in the remediation playbook that I created, well, what I did was, okay, process all this information and then create a workflow, an approved workflow that takes care of the, the updates. Since the updates are mostly, uh, mostly a write a reboot, what it does is it adds an approval node. So when the workflow, the remediation workflow will run, it will show up an approval node on, on, um, on, on, on the top of the screen and it will say, okay, the workflow that is now running requires some approval. And you can, of course, or approve or just disapprove the, based on the maintenance window if you want to plan a maintenance window or whatever. So you are not bound to have, of course, everything automated to the last bit because, of course, this is impossible, especially in, 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 in initial critical system or business critical scenarios. So the, 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 the important bit here is that we basically need to have something that is structured to match our needs, of course. So when we talk about event automation, it's not just about having everything done automatically, but it, it, it is mostly about having something that is you know, consistent with, with everything that we have. So this is basically the last part. So the 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 the, 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 the advisory handling, all of those are just created by the playbook. So I didn't create anything on the controller on, on, on at this stage. Because of course, also the configuration of the controller can be automated. So I, I just created everything inside the, 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 the automation that was triggered by the, the, the insights integration. So just to, it will take a lot of time here. So it is now, the system is now working because it applied all the patches and I will just sorry, I will just keep this one.
to, to do insights, we will have a clean situation. So we basically start with a new machine, we patched everything in, 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 in an automated way, and then we just moved forward, and we have our hardware we have ready for use. In the second use case, so there was done with the VM, then we configured, so we had this event that the VM is created. This event was moved forward to where? So is this, where, where is this gathered up, this event? That's yeah, basically the first event was coming from our webhook, that, that was coming from CloudInit. So CloudInit just called the web. The, yes. the web created on the registration part, the installation part. The last bit was the, the second event that was coming from Red Hat Insights. When the system was registered, it, it, it found some um, advisories, and those advisories were payload that, that was treated as a sort of webhook again. So it, it's basically a webhook with a payload. So yeah, that's the insights. Exactly. For, for this use case, it, in, in, in insights acts as a sort of uh, monitoring solution to just to, provide advisories for the system. At that okay, point. and that creates the next event. Exactly. And here, upon we create the uh, forehand the Yeah, the, exactly, the papers. The papers, yeah. To just to just uh, uh, remediate that. Once okay. the remediation is in place, there will be no additional event. So we are going to have potentially our VM that is ready and and this is, then this leads us to the second part of, 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 of the use case. On, on the second use case, and it is not working anymore. The demo got there. Okay. The second use case is, is the monitoring integration. So we install the Dynatrace agent, so e everything is, is, is working. The node exporter is working, so in, in this specific use case, we will leverage Alert Manager from OpenShift Virtualization to create an, an alert that is based on the uh, disk usage. So the, di the, the disk that is attached to our VM will, be, uh, will not be empty anymore, so because we will create a huge file. Or this, is a, this is a very basic use case, so something that happens often. So we, we, we have an, 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 an event coming from OpenShift virtualization that is created as an alert, the integration with Alert Manager, and it will be called OCP virt disk is full. Of course, this creates an, a, a notification. Alert Manager will create a notification, and it will be in intercepted by the, the, the event-driven controller. In our case, the event-driven controller will take two actions. The first one is opening a ticket on ServiceNow, so it will create a ticket on ServiceNow. And it will remediate the issue. Of course, this is a very specific use case, so I exactly knew what I had to do when the disk is full. So I, I just removed the huge file that I created. But of course, this can be adapted to any potential use case that requires some, uh, some, in, some potential human or, 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 or automated intervention. And of course, the last part is Alert Manager stops firing the alarm. And of course, stopping the, 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 the alarm also creates a notification that the alarm is not there anymore. And this is the second event. So it will close the issue, and, 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 and our machine will be functional again. We, so we have another uh, bit. This time is the, is the right one. And we have to a new entry on the top left that is, of course, ServiceNow. The, 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 this is the classical uh, EDA interface, the event-driven automation interface, and we have a rulebook that is based on Alert Manager. So it's waiting for Alert Manager events. What happens is that in, in my uh, virtual machine that I created before, so we are still talking about the same virtual machine, so I will log in, 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 in into this virtual machine and create an issue. In, 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 in this case, the issue will be making a disk full. So I, I have a, a file system, a two gigabyte file system, and I will just fill it with a huge file. So we, we, we see now that we have no alerts here. So it's all potentially running good. We have no tickets open in, 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 in service now. So it seems like our day is going quite better. What happens is now we switch on the console, and, and then we have we need to take care of something. So we log in, in into our virtual machine and we create basically a huge file to just fill the space. 
Of course, if we have a monitoring system behind our machine, because we also have Dynatrace here, also Dynatrace will uh, react to this event saying, okay, there is a problem. But in this specific use case, we just focused on the alert manager integration. So we are waiting for alert manager to react to this, to, to, to this event. Of course, everything is configured to, uh, with, with custom alerts. So it's not something that is coming out of the box. And as you can see here, the, it, it just triggers a critical event. That is OCP virt low disk. It's a very generic one. It specifies which is the, 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 the disk that is low. And this, after five minutes, by, uh, by, by default, will trigger a, an event that is intercepted by the, the, um, the, the event the event controller, and, and of course, some automation will run. In this case, again, I said, it's a very simple use case because I created a huge file, and so the resolution will be just deleting the, 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 the huge file. But of course, if there is a very specific workflow that you can have in your environment or in your infrastructure, you can, of, of course, tailor the playbook and, and, and the automation exactly based on this. So you can see that now Alert Manager is doing something. So we have, uh, it, it, it's opening the ticket, first of all, on, on, on uh, service now. And of course, it's remediating the issue. So we will have here our um, ticket created. And, and, and again, th this is all coming from basic information of the alerts. So if, if you see it in, in the description, we have the exact same description of the alert. So I didn't do anything. I, I just enriched a bit with the information about the extended or, 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 or add a new disk, because again, it should not be al automatic 100%. It could also be someone else that is taking care of the issue. So you can enrich the fact and say, OK, the, we, with the automation, I'm not able to, to remediate this. And I need someone from another team to just take care of that. So I just raise a ticket. And I, I potentially could also do nothing about that. And what happened is that the, the file was, uh, w was deleted. So the alert was not there anymore. And we have. Uh, the, the, the ticket that is now closed, and, and our free system is, 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 is empty ag uh, 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 again. Of course, this can apply to potentially an, a, a, any other use case. And very fast, and, and sorry for, 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 for the first part that was a bit slow, it's the last part, the integration with Dynatrace. This will be very similar to the disk one, but it will be based on the CPU usage. So what I will do, is generating a um, fake uh, activity on the system, on the same VM. And we will have the same kind of integration. So something will happen. Dynatrace will raise a problem. The problem will be fetched, will be the event that is triggering the, uh, the, uh, the automation. A and again, I'm creating a ticket, and I'm resolving the issue. As, uh, as I mentioned before, e even in this case, I have a very specific use case, so I, I, I know exactly which is the process that, that is causing the issue. But of course, we can do enrichment on, 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 on that as well to just make it you know, uh, tailored to our use case. So making it very quick. I will just speed it up a bit because here we go. So we, we have now a, a rulebook that is running a Dynatrace interaction. And Dynatrace will be monitoring our machine, because of course, we configure monitoring when we provision the machine. So it's all, it's all running good. There are no tickets again. And what I will do this time, OK, yeah. And so I think we are quite short on time. Uh, the idea, the idea was to trigger the, um, the saturation of, of the VM CPU. So I'm, I'm, I'm just basic, basically running some OpenSSL commands to just saturate the CPU for the, for the VM. And, uh, and, 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 and of course, this will translate in, into a problem in, in, in Dynatrace, because it will see the, the CPU usage being 100%. So if, if, if you see here, you, you, you can see the rogue processes that I created just to saturate all the CPU. And of course, in the bottom left part, it, it, will, it will translate in, in, in a problem. And, and it will raise a potential ticket. So we see the CPU that is starting to go up. 
and after a couple of refresh, we have the problem that is, th that is actually raised in Dynatrace. So I, I again, the, the, the workflow will be the, the, the same. So in this case, the event is the Dynatrace problem th that is fetched by the, 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 the source. And, and, and again, this is an example of how we can enrich the information. So this is not coming directly from the problem. I just did some manipulation on, on the data. So this is exactly what we did when, when, when I was talking about the, uh, the data en 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 enrichment that we can do at the component level. Uh, as you can see, something happened because actually the, the, the automation just killed basically all the, the processes that were, con the, that were consuming the CPU. And of course, the, the state of the ticket is, is, is now resolved. So the point, so basically that, that, that was the idea. So these three use cases are very, very, very simple. Something that can happen daily in, 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 in a system. But the, the, the idea, the basic idea behind event-driven automation is that you can do this, but you can do that, first of all, at scale, and of course with, uh, with potentially any kind of device. So everything that you see in, 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 in this demo is, uh, is available on, on GitHub because I created that repo for GitHub. I don't know why this is not working this time, but again, it's fine. And this is the repo. If you are in, in interested, th there are all the configuration bits. So both the configuration for the automation controller, the EDA controller, and anything, and the description of the use case, and all the files that are required to just re re replicate all the use cases. Again. If it's not OpenShift virtualization, it can be any provisioner. So it can be a, any I, I hypervisor, it can be KVM. So, so th the first concept was on KVM. So basically, that's the reason why. And yeah, really sorry for being a bit late. So if there is any question or anything, I will be here and around. Or if you have something now, or otherwise, I will just, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. You can actually do that. Both in the th this information is available in the controller, so in the rulebook activation. So each rulebook activation has all the uh, the history of, of, of what trigger what. And, 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 and you can do exactly this. So you can enrich the information by adding a sort of trace of all the, the, the events. You can, actu you can absolutely do that. And this is one of the, 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 the good thing of having the, the, the potential of being able to track anything, because each source tells you exactly what trigger what. So yeah. Well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And sorry for, uh, for this one. <laughs>